Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here. My next po uh, Airspeed Plays TCGs episode. And this is going to be part two uh, Pokemon trading card game. So this is going to be obviously the first game that I cover in detail. And I'll do the same for Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic and Cardfight Vanguard uh, later on. But uh, as I said, Pokemon TCG is the first game I'm going to be doing. And as I said, I'm going to cover this mainly using a starter deck to explain the game to you and stuff like that, different types of cards and stuff like that. I'll talk uh, later on about rarity, collectability, getting into the game competitively and stuff like that. But I'm going to start off by coming at this from a kind of beginner point of view. Like, how easy is this game to get into if you're a complete beginner just wanting to get into the game? And so the easiest place to start off with is different products that are available to get you into the game. Because that's... <clears throat> if you decide you're getting into a game, that's the first thing you actually look for. So, what is available? Well, first and foremost is obviously this, which is a the Kalos starter set, which is basically a starter deck for Pokemon trading card game. This is the latest ones. There's um, this Chespin deck, there's a Froakie deck, and there's also a Fennekin deck. Every time there's a new starter deck release, they always come out in either two or threes. Uh, every time there's a new generation, they always do it with the three starter Pokemon, otherwise they just select two powerful Pokemon and do it that way. But um, there's always a starter deck available. <clears throat> you get one deck, you get a mat like this, and some other stuff. I'll, t I'll open this and explain what you get in it later on. But this is just the easiest way to get into the game. Learn how to play, get yourself a full deck of cards and stuff like that. If your friend gets one, you can play a match and stuff like that. But... Um, uh, but then obviously you want other cards to like add to the deck, start making new decks and stuff like that. So what's available? The main other thing with Pokemon TCG available is um, tins like this. So um, they, these are probably the other most common thing along with just regular booster packs. Which I don't have one on hand to show you. But you know it's just a, a, a pack of cards. It's got 10 in it. Um, and they're... In general, the the way in Pokemon, uh, any any card game, you get new cards. But the tins are an easy way to get some cards as well. Now, this is um, an Embor tin from Black and White series. And what you get in this, it says in the back, is um, you obviously get a holographic card of the Pokemon on the front. So this is your easy way to get a shiny Embor. You also get a little figure of Embor, or whoever's on the front of your tin. You get four packs of booster packs of cards, so basically 40 packs, no, 40 cards, and you also get a bonus uh, online code to play the game online, because the past few years that's what they've tried to do as well. If you get the game in paper form, you can also play online, and it's uh, kind of good value for money that way. But uh, yeah, this is kind of what an online code card looks like, you just uh, get the thing, thing there, and then there's the uh, code on the back. But... Um, yeah, and these are just a nice way to quickly get into the game. You, know, you get a few packs, you get a tin to hold your cards, you get a shiny for sure with the um, promo card, and most of the time they include a little figurine. I don't have the Embor one on hand, but here's the Tepig one, who's obviously his um, pre-evolution. Pretty small, but uh, nicely detailed, and like uh, just, just a very nice little figure that you get with a set. And It's almost worth getting the... Um, uh, the tin for that alone but um yeah um as i said there's booster packs available also starter decks tins the only other thing that i'm really aware of that pokemon also does is um kind of these special sets they're kind of like tins but just without the tin kind of way in that they are just a selection of promo cards and booster packs and you also can get blister packs of um three packs together and you get a promo card in it and then the only other thing I'll mention right now, like, this is the first X and Y release thing. The actual set involving most X and Y Pokemon is out until February, so this is a kind of pre-release thing. They did this kind of same thing with their um, special set. In this case, it's a kind of, like, Sylveon set, and you get a, one of every evil evolution along with some packs of cards. So I'm going to show you a picture of that set here. So mainly that's the way you get it. It's um, it's very beginner focused. There's not much um, with the uh, Pokemon TCG around getting into the game competitively. Like there's no product that gives you a lot of the cards that are used competitively. 
that are powerful and stuff like that. It's very focused around super basic deck and then buy packs to get the rest of the cards. So the products are good for getting into the game. Not so good at getting you super into the game like competitively and like so you'll be playing some of the best cards. It's a bit kind of random based on the packs you get. But I'll talk about that more with the other games that we're going to cover in this series. For now, Pokemon is kind of the basic one and basic is going to be the key word I think for the whole Pokemon trading card game as we get into opening this. So uh, I've actually set up some of this stuff here but I'll just briefly go through what you get in it. You open it up to the side and this is what you get in it basically. I've opened all the stuff up. You get your um, you have your damage counters and stuff like that. You have your poison burn marker, your coin and deck box. But um, anyway, let's just quickly open this up and get this stuff out. This is just a little uh, kind of uh, explanation of how the game has changed going into X and Y. There's not really much uh, to look at here except, you know, fairy type Pokemon have been introduced into the TCG as well as the um, games. And then it's just a checklist on the other side, nothing too important. Here's the little cardboard sheet you get all the damage counters, burn and uh, poison marker on. And then, as I said, here's the um, markers themselves. There's a 100 point marker and you see it's just blank on the back. Um, and you see, you get the same with like 50 and also... Um, 50 and also 10. But you know, you've got your poison marker, your burn marker, as well as your coin. And this is a very, this is a game mechanic used a lot in Pokemon. Flip a coin and you get an effect or something like that. Really heavily used, so you actually do need a coin to play the game, like, uh, well, or at all, really, for the most part. And then you get your um, deck box, which uh, when you first open it has all the cards except the uh, chestnut shiny in it. So um, there is that to mention. Now, I don't have the cards in here, but it is a pretty nice, just basic deck box to keep the 60 cards in this deck safe. But there's that. But I have all the cards laid out here. Now, I've basically split the deck in half. I've gone through the deck, laid it all out, gone, you know, okay, there's four chest pins in the deck, two in each deck. There's two chestnuts, one in each deck, and so on. So basically these decks are identical apart from like one or two cards, but uh, I'm just doing this for ease of uh, kind of setting up. So I've set up the uh, opposing side of the um, mat here. This of course is the mat you get in the starter deck. It's a kind of two player mat, which is different than usual. And there's the setup for the game board. You know, you've got prize cards, benched Pokemon, active Pokemon, your deck, and I just put the hand there. That is the discard pile there. This, that's the remainder of the player's hand. But, okay, so you've shuffled your deck, how do you set up your game board? That's the first thing to start with, with when uh, kind of playing the game. And the first thing you do is you draw seven cards. So, three, five, seven. It's just a bit awkward to do holding the camera. So, there's my hand of seven. I'll just flip them over so you can all see them. So as you can see, there's a selection here of the different types of cards, which I'll go through briefly now. One of the most important cards in Pokemon would be these energy cards, which you use to give to um, activate the attacks of your Pokemon. When you attach them to a Pokemon, they stay on it. They don't get like used up when you use attacks or anything like that. They just um, kind of stay with the Pokemon. And when the Pokemon is um, knocked out, they go to the discard pile with the Pokemon. Next up is the trainer cards, which are the things that basically like accelerate your deck, add effects to the game and stuff like that. So this potion card heals uh, 30 damage from a Pokemon. Um, you can use as many item trainer cards as you want per turn, but you can only use one of the supporter cards, which will have red supporter writing there per turn. And finally, the di other different type of card is just Pokemon. These are the main cards in, in the game because you're, these are going to win you your games and stuff like that. So ch this Chessman, as you know, there's no evolution before this. So this is a basic Pokemon, and you can use this at the start of the game. It's got health up there. It's got his two attacks here. It's got his um, weaknesses there. It's weak to fire times two, and a, and a retreat cost. I'll explain all this stuff as I go through a kind of little bit of a sample kind of turn back and forth. Um, it's got a Pokedex entry down here. 
and some stats about the Pokemon in this little silver bar. But um, what you do when you have your hand is you first check that you have a basic Pokemon in your hand. And once you have one, you're fine. You can keep that hand. If you don't, you have to shuffle your hand back into your deck and draw seven cards again. Luckily, we have one. That's our chest bin here, and we can use him. So what you then have to do is just um, place him face down in your active Pokemon slot. Because the game hasn't started yet, you don't want to alert them to your strategy, and then they can just put the right active Pokemon out to deal with that. So it's all random at the start when you uh, reveal it. Um, and you can put as many as you want on your bench once you don't have more than five because like the Pokemon games you can only have six Pokemon with you five on the bench one active Pokemon and then there's that so then you know you're ready to go you've kept your hand what next you put this the next six cards from the top of your deck onto into your prize card zone so just quickly do that and these prize cards are going to help you to win the game Every time you knock out one of your opponent's uh, Pokemon, you draw one of your prize cards. Um, and then when you draw all six, knock out six of your opponent's Pokemon, you win the game. And the interesting thing about the game is that like they come straight off your deck. They're not like additional things about the game. These are your life in this game. So like your best card in your deck could be your, one of your prize cards, which could affect you winning the game and stuff like that so it's actually an interesting kind of game mechanic that it places six cards of your deck one tenth of your 60 card deck out of your kind of reach for the early parts of the game it um makes for an interesting game um but then okay the, the game board is set up everyone has their prize cards everyone has their hands active pokemon you flip a coin to decide who goes first very simple you know heads i go first and then all players at the start of your turn flip over all of their like Pokemon on their field and on the bench. And then, you know, okay, there's the state of the board as I start my turn by drawing a card because, as you can see here, it's on the game board, parts of a turn, draw a card, do any actions, and then attacking is the last thing you do before you end your turn. But uh, yeah, so draw a card to your hand, it's a mill tank. Another basic Pokemon. So I'm going to put it on the bench, just uh, like that. And now these two cards are both in play. Most of the time when you get attacked, it'll be your active Pokemon, but there are some effects in the game that can attack Pokemon on the bench. Um, but um, the key thing here is that, you know, I have Quilladin in my hand, and I could evolve Chespin, but the problem is it's the first turn of the game, so this is Chespin's first turn on the field, so I can't evolve him yet. I can evolve him next turn, and you can only evolve once per turn. So I can't do that yet. So instead I'll just place, you're allowed to place one energy card on, the, on one Pokemon per turn. I'll just place one leaf energy on Chespin. And because it's the first turn of the game, I can't attack, which is uh, fair enough. And then you can activate trainer cards if you want, but you know, there's no damage on the field. I have no reason to use my um, potion. Uh, so I can't attack, so I just have to end my turn. You know, your opponent, draws a card, they play their energy, put extra Pokemon on the bench and stuff like that, activate effects and stuff like that. It's a very basic game. I feel like I've almost explained it all right now, but um, just quickly go through it. So um, let me just show you this card. As you can see, this is a Pansage and it's attack. He can attack now that it's uh, the second turn of the game. He has an attack called Collect and it says draw two cards. But he, he's a leaf Pokemon, but the cost for its attack is only one that's a colorless energy or a normal energy. And and there are double, there are colorless energy cards in the game. But for the most part, any energy card counts towards one of these white ones. So him putting a fairy energy card on Pansage allows him to activate that effect. And since this is an effect that doesn't do damage, he just activates it and he draws another card. I say this is an attack, his turn ends, he can't do anything else, so um, there's that. Um, and then that's the end of the turn. But, let's just go back a bit. He has a trainer card he can use, and this one's called Pokeball. And it simply says, flip a coin, if heads, search your deck for a Pokemon, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Shove your deck afterwards. So, this is a way to, searching, to search out a Pokemon you could need in your game. So, for instance, if I had this on my side of the board, 
say I didn't have Quilladin in my hand, I'd use Pokeball to search for Quilladin or Chestnut to just set up that I can go on for the rest of the game. And you know, to activate it, you literally just put it down, activate the effect, and see if you get it or not, search your deck, and so on. Do exactly what the card says. But um, let's cut back to my turn. So I draw a card, and look, conveniently, I got the Pokeball. Um, didn't even plan that. And then, like I said before, you can put any, a basic Pokemon on your bench. We don't have any more. You can evolve a Pokemon now. So to evolve Chespin, it's our second turn. We can evolve him. We just simply put the Quilladin card on top of Chespin, and now he's evolved. When you evolve, you basically just put the card over. You can't use the attacks from the previous form, but you do get the new health from the um, new form. So Chespin had 60, Quilladin now has 90 and it has new attacks. You can still put an energy card on him. So now he has one fairy and one leaf. So I can actually use that leech, uh, leech seed attack, which also has the effect of healing 10 damage. And you simply go, okay, I'm attacking. It does 20 damage and you do put 20 damage counters on it. So, you know, it has 70 minus 10, it only has 50 left. And I haven't had any damage done to me, so I can't heal anything. And that's basically how the game works. There's nothing really complicated about this game because, and this is the key thing I'll say about all of these games, the only complexities come into trading card games really is when your opponent can do something during your turn and the timing about that, like when you can do it, how cards kind of interact together. Like if I, you know, I do this, you do this, and then I do something else, how does it all resolve in the end? With Pokemon, there's nothing really like that. I, as far as I'm aware, there are no cards in the game that you can activate out of your hand on your opponent's turn. The only thing your opponent can really do on their turn is just rely on the resistances of their Pokemon, the health of their Pokemon. If their Pokemon has like an effect or Pokebody that like limits damage or something like that. Or if they use a trainer card that um, is basically an item to give a Pokemon that maybe gives them more health or something like that. There's very little you can do on like your opponent's turn, and so that makes the game very easy, very basic to understand. Um, and it just it kind of just means that you're left a little bit helpless on your opponent's turn, but there's something good about that kind of basic level of this game that it's good for kids to get into. Not really something maybe for really kind of hardcore trading card fans. You can get deep into the game. There are there's a lot of there is some strategy to it. The, but the main strategy from like my perspective, not being super crazy into this game, is um, just whether or not you want to have your best Pokemon that you're going to set up out in your active slot, giving him energy like this, or do you want to set up your Pokemon on your bench, like for later on. So you let your, your opponent take out a bunch of your Pokemon, get the lead in the game, but... After that, you've got this amazing Pokemon to come in, fully loaded, full of energy, ready to attack, and then you're in control of the game. That's really what this comes down to, like deciding, am I going to put my one energy card a turn onto my active Pokemon, or set up for the future when my active Pokemon is knocked out? Um, that's the main strategy of the game, and um, let's just say a few turns later I decide, okay, He's got three energy now, he can use that 50 needle arm attack. Does, does 50 damage. So now, as you can see, it adds up to 50, 10, and 10, a 70. He only has 70 health. He's knocked out. So what happens is both Pansage and the energy card attached to him are put in the discard pile over here. Uh, because I've knocked out a Pokemon, I get to choose any one of these prize cards. I don't get to look at them. Just like randomly choose one. I choose this one, it's an energy card, and it goes to my hand. So they give you an advantage of getting an extra card into your hand every time you knock out an active Pokemon. And then what they have to do is have a bench and decide, okay, my new active Pokemon is Bunnelby. You also can win the game if your opponent doesn't have a benched Pokemon to replace their Pokemon. Even if it's in their hand, it doesn't matter, it has to be on the bench for it to become a new active Pokemon. If not, they lose. The only other way to win the game is if your opponent runs out of cards to draw. So, as you can see, the first part of a turn is drawing a card. If it gets to your opponent's turn and they can't do that, they lose the game. 
so um, there's that too. But uh, I think I've explained basically everything about this game right now. Because as I said, all of the the effects are some something like flip a coin. This attack does 50, uh, if heads, this attack does 40 more damage. Flip a coin, flip a coin, flip a coin. It's all about that, really. Um, the main uh, effects in the game really revolve around limiting damage, affecting weaknesses and resistance. So the most interesting ones, I think, are like uh, energy accelerators, where like a Pokemon's effect says you can move any number of like fire energy cards around your team as you want. So if your active Pokemon has that ability and you have like five fire energy cards, you can actually just during your turn say, okay, I'm going to put these two on my benched Pokemon or move them from bench to something like that. that. I think that's one of the big competitive strategies of late, but um, yeah, that's basically the game. There are also like special conditions that are listed here, like um, asleep, burned, confused, paralyzed, poisoned, but they're all explained here, you know. Poisoned, as you would assume from the games, is you take one damage as every turn passes. Um, paralyzed is basically for one turn you can't attack or retreat. Burned is you flip a coin between turns and if it's heads you take two damage. No, if tails you take two damage. And then asleep is basically between turns you flip a coin, if heads you wake up, if tails you stay asleep. Um, one final thing I'll actually mention, one last me game mechanic would be the um, retreat cost. So let's say for instance that our Quilladin here has 30 damage and their opponent has an attack that's going to kill him next turn. I want to save him to, for later on to like evolve into say a chestnut that I haven't drawn yet. So I want to get him out of the field and put my mill, ta mill tank in to kind of sponge some hits. So I, his retreat cost is two energy, two colorless energy of any color. So what you do here is just, you get two energy and discard it, put it into the discard pile. And now you're allowed to retreat Quilladin to the bench with its energy. May, may have forgot to mention, but you can also put energy cards on Pokemon on your bench if you want. And then you have to replace Quilladin with a, a, another Pokemon on your bench. So in our case, Miltank. And then for the most part, this keeps your Quilladin safe from incoming attacks. And then your Miltank is in the kind of line of fire. So that's the only other real game mechanic involved. But then, um, as you can see, it's very, very basic. Um, it's a fun game, as all of these trading card games are. There's just qu not quite the level of strategy that you would expect, because it really just <laughs> does just come down to getting your strongest uh, Pokemon out at the right time, where it's not going to get knocked out in a few turns, and it's just going to run straight through your opponent. Um, it also is heavily reliant on the number of... Um, basic Pokemon your opponent draws and how much like searchability they have in their deck if they get the evolutions of Pokemon at the right times but um that's the game um I'm going to talk about the uh, card rarities next um so check out that you know I'm going to talk about you know what the booster packs are like what you get in each booster pack and then what's a rare what's not a rare and stuff like that so I'll just uh, tidy this up and get to that now Okay, so I've cleaned the deck up, and I'm going to talk to you about um, rarities of these cards. So obviously, you get booster packs. You're not guaranteed to get all the good cards in every pack and stuff like that. But So I'll just talk about the different rarities that are available in this game. I have a selection of cards here. But uh, let's focus on this one first, because this Tropius card is a common, because as you can see there, if it would focus... Um, that it is indeed a circle, which means that it's a common in the game, which um, in every 10 card booster pack, you get five commons, three uncommons, and one one rare, you know, shiny or something like that, and one reverse holographic, which I'll talk about in a minute. But after um, common is uncommon, which is uh, signified by that diamond there, so this um, Pokemon communication card is... Uh, Signified as a uncommon by that diamond there. Next rarity up is just a normal rare. So as you can see, there's nothing shiny about the card, but it does have the star there, which means that it's a shiny. And um, <clears throat> most of the time, final stage Pokemon are rares. Some final stage Pokemon are are uncommon, but for the most part, they're rares. Um, next would be um, this, which is um, 
a hollow, which is the next rarity up. And some sets, this is the highest rarity you can get in it. Especially sets that come immediately after a generation. Uh, usually they do uh, have these as the best, but as you can see them there. It's got the same star as a rare, but it's a holographic because it's got the uh, shininess behind the card. Um, next up is uh, something they've changed over time. That is um, the idea of um, EX cards or Level X cards. Now, um, you see the Shaman here is a Pokemon Level X and you level it up by putting it onto a normal Shaman. Now this is even rarer than a normal Hollow because you've got Shininess behind the card, Shininess around the card, and you can see there the star is actually shiny too, which signifies it's even rarer. But uh, they keep switching back to Pokemon EX, which um, sometimes replaces the final stage Pokemon. Um, so, for instance, this Celebi would actually replace your normal Celebi card because it's a basic and you can just play this. But the problem is it, there's a drawback to these level X's and that um, EX's. When they're knocked out, your opponent draws two prize cards, so there is a little bit of a drawback to the um, plus. But it's the same situation here, you know, you see this shiny star in the corner and the border, but um, I think the upcoming set's going to have EX's in it. Um, but uh, finally, is something, I don't really have something to show off. I'm going to show a picture of the next one, but I can sort of show off what it is. And it's uh, full art cards, and um, you can see here with these... Um, Raik this Raikou and Suicu legend card which when they first introduced them were done in half so like this is the top half of that here's the top half of Lugia legend um, and they're kind of double cards you just put the two of them together and you um, use it but of late they've started doing um, normal holographic cards in a style where it's full art so instead of the picture just being in this box the picture is actually the full length of the card, so the Pokemon is actually over the whole card, and then the text is just over the Pokemon and stuff like that. They look really cool. I'll show you um, the full um, art uh, Victini card, which I think looks great now in an image. But uh, so yeah, that, that looks pretty cool. That's what the, they're they're all the rarities, as you can see. As I said, you get five commons in every pack. Three uncommons, um, and one rare holographic EX or like full art card or whatever, depending on how lucky you are with your pack. The last card in the pack is a reverse holographic, which um, is one of these. You can see the shininess is not behind the picture, it's just on the rest of the card. That's why it's called a reverse holographic. And now, any card in the set can be one of these, except full arts, I think, and EXs. So you can get any common, any uncommon, any rare, or any hollow like this. So say this Porygon, for instance, you could actually get this as a reverse holographic, and the way it would look would be that it's got the same shininess on the outside, but it just wouldn't have the shininess behind the picture. But it would still be the same card. It'd still say it's a rare, but it would be reverse holographic, so... Any uncommon, rare, hollow, or or um, <laughs> um, common can be a reverse holographic. This Iggly book buff, for example, is a uncommon. But uh, yeah, next up, I'll talk a bit about um, playing Pokemon, trading trading card game competitively, what it's like to get um, the uh, different um, sets and stuff like that. How easy is it to get the good cards and stuff like that in the game? Um, okay, so I'm going to so, talk about yeah, the more competitive we'll side of uh, playing Pokemon TCG right now. Obviously, every trading card game has a sort of meta game to it, where the community around that game makes these decks that are just really good. And when you see tournaments and stuff like that, you really see a focus on like two, three different types of decks. And you sort of wonder to yourself, I suppose, when first seeing this competitive side of your game, how do I go from the starter deck that I first bought to actually getting to that style of deck that is winning tournaments and stuff like that? Because I want to do that. Um, the first thing to look at, I think, is just the ratio of the different types of cards you use in these decks. Because ultimately it comes down to um, drawing the key cards you want and setting up your strategy as soon as possible. So let's look at the um, 
ratio of cards in the Chespin deck that we just were looking at earlier on in the video. That is a 60 card deck like every Pokemon deck is. But the ratio of the cards is that there are 24 energy cards in that deck. 12 for fairy, 12 for grass. There are only 10 supporter cards, uh, 10 trainer cards in that deck. A mix of, I think, 8 items and uh, 2 supporters. And then the rest, the 26 cards, are Pokemon. Ranging from, you know, like, the Chespin line, which is, uh, there's 4 Chespins, 4 Quilladins, 2 Chestnuts, and then there's some other stuff, like, uh, 4 Snubbles and 2 Granbulls and so on. There's a lot of cards. But let's look at, for instance, one of the more popular competitive decks that's uh, winning a lot of late which is uh, the deck that's called Blastoise and Keldeo EX. That deck has a, br a breakdown of only 14 energies. It's only based around water Pokemon, so it's got 14 water energies. It's actually got 33 trainers, supporters, and stadium cards, which are another type of uh, trainer card. So that's more than three times the number that you get in the starter deck. And there's only 13 Pokemon, which is half the number of... Uh, Pokemon that are in this deck. And if you look at the breakdown, there's two key cards in this deck. And they are, as I said, the name of the deck, Blastoise and Keldeo EX. And basically what this deck is trying to do is use the trainer cards to just go through your deck. There's a lot of draw cards, there's a lot of cards that help you search for Pokemon, and there's a lot of cards that help you evolve Pokemon quicker. So Blastoise obviously is a stage 2 Pokemon. You need to evolve it from Squirtle into War Turtle <laughs> into Blastoise. But I think using Rare Candy you can just make that process really quickly. And then you use cards like Professor Juniper to get to those Rare Candies quickly. Because the key is like you don't want to spend like 3-4 turns or longer getting that Blastoise out. You just want to spend like two, three, maybe even less turns to do that. And so that's why there's so many trainers and supporters in the deck, because you want to use all of them to get through the basically the, the limit on this thing, which is you have to have 60 cards, yet the usable cards in your deck are really probably only around 20 or less that you actually like want to draw. So that's why there's so many draw cards to get through the other 40 uh, by just drawing themselves. And then, when you get your Blastoise out, the key to this deck is that it's got an ability called Del Deluge, <laughs> uh, Deluge, which um, is basically means that you can attach as many Water Energy cards from your hand as you like to one of your Pokémon. You can do this as many times as you want. So while there's a limit on playing like one Energy for the most part, that ability allows you to play as many many Water Energies as you want during your turn, which combos really well with the Keldeo EX card, which you can see here, which has this uh, amazing attack. You know, it's a basic Pokemon, it's a Keldeo EX, so no need to evolve this or anything like that. It's just a three colorless energy secret sword, and it does 20 more damage for each water energy attached to this Pokemon. So, you're playing an all water deck, you're putting three water energies on that thing to make that attack work, that's doing 110 damage straight away, and you're getting those energies on it quickly, you're getting your Blastoise set up quicker, then any starter deck that that's out there. So that's one of the key things to Pokemon is that you abilities like that, and there's a couple of them. I think Fire has an ability like that where it just lets you spread energies around your um, Pokemon in the field, and then Water has an uh, ability like that where you can attach as many as you want basically per turn. And then Blastoise even has a decent attack. You know, it can uh, attack itself and stuff like that. But it just goes to show like. The deck that I showed you, I didn't even go through every single card, but you saw that there was the Chespin, Ches Chestnut line, there was a Weedle in there, there was a Miltank, there was um, a Pansage, and even more in that deck when you go through it. There's a lot of Pokemon that don't like link in overly well together, and it just means that it's a very basic deck to start you playing the game. There's no real comboing in that deck, um, and so a lot of the draws are just going to be you get in cards you don't want. And so the Blastoise deck specifically is a is a perfect example to show you the key to actually playing this game competitively, and that is getting the cards that you want out of your deck quickly. Because you know the even the lay layout of Pokemon, there's three Squirtle in this deck, one War Turtle in the deck, and four Blastoise. 
and then you know three Keldeo, one Mewtwo is the other card, and then there's one Curum as well for other Pokemon to have. The key is just using your car, Pokemon, your trainers to get to those as quickly as possible, and you're using cards that basically skip like evolution steps. So that's why there's not many War Turtles in the deck. Um, but let's talk about the other side of playing it competitively. It's easy to just say, okay, this is the deck list I want, but how do you actually get those cards? As I said. Each pack has five commons, three uncommons, one reverse holographic, and then one rare or above card in it, depending on how lucky you are. The problem with Pokemon, I think, is that it's probably, of all of these games that I'm going to talk about today, it probably has one of the worst kind of things where, like, you open a pack and open a bunch of packs, you probably won't get anywhere near playing one of these decks. Actually, buying booster packs to play this game competitively doesn't really work unless you're literally buying boxes of booster packs, like 36, and you guarantee yourself a certain amount of hollows and stuff like that. Like, for instance, the Blastoise Keldeo deck I talked about. The Blastoise is a hollow, and then the Keldeo is an EX card, so you've got hollows which are rare in themselves to get, and then the Keldeo EX is super rare. Luckily, I think the Keldeo, I think, came in a tin at some point, so that was that, that makes that a little bit easier to get. But still, you need four Blastoises to play that deck properly. That's a lot of packs to get that one, because there's a lot of other hollows. You're not guaranteed once you pull a hollow to get a Blastoise. There's so many more in a pack, and so just buying packs to hopefully get that one deck that you want is just very kind of bad in this case. And even even if you pull your 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 Blastoises, what if you don't pull like the one War Turtle you need, or the three Squirtle you need, um, or some of the um, trainers that you need to play this deck? It just it gets very expensive if you just buy booster packs. So I think most competitive players literally just buy the cards in singles online. So you you pay like whatever ten or ten plus dollars for one Blastoise card to save you buying like 30 booster packs to try and get it and th th again th that's the key to these kind of playing these games competitively that like you Pokemon I think is probably the hardest game of all of these to just open a pack open a bunch of packs and try and put together a deck because there's so many different types and at most you want to play two two uh, different uh, like uh, types of Pokemon in a deck and you know, you have to be very careful about evolution lines, and you know, that's the thing. With Pokemon, you to make a deck work, you need to have multiples of each Pokemon in the game. So, you have four Blastoise in that Blastoise deck, you have three Squirtles. You need four Blastoise, that's a lot of packs just to get that many, and you know, just opening a few packs and hoping to put together a deck is just not going to work. I think just the way the game works competitively, compared to the way the boosters are, it just makes it really difficult to do it. So, um, competitive's kind of hard to get into, um, but it's it's interesting, definitely. But, um, yeah, that's really all I have to say on this uh, Pokemon uh, video. Sorry it's been so long, you know, um, it takes time to cover every aspect of these TCG games. I hope you enjoy the kind of detail I'm going into about these games, maybe teaching you some stuff you didn't know about them, and... I'm sure any hardcore players of these games will have many bad words to say about uh, what I was saying about these games, but um, I'm, I'm coming at this from a kind of uh, average player point of view in all of them, in that you know I did my research, uh, but not an insane amount. I'm not super into any of these trading card games, but I know, I think, enough to kind of talk about it uh, well enough. But uh, yeah, that's been the Pokemon uh, video. I'll talk. I'll co I'll compare it more with the rest of the games in the video. The, probably the sixth video, sixth part of this video, after I cover all four games and some other ones, and see like how it stacks up in all the categories I've uh, talked about. But um, for now, uh, thanks for watching this uh, video, and bye.